So the five steps to translate your inner B and turn her into your inner BFF. We're gonna define our goal. We're gonna list what you do instead. Then you're under, gonna understand what your competing fears and renewed commitments are. You're gonna identify your assumptions and limiting beliefs. And then you're gonna turn all of this insight into kind awareness and action. Oh, Ryan, glad you printed down the meditation round. That's awesome. Um, so just go ahead, if you don't have your worksheet, um, go ahead and just get a piece of paper out and put it into four columns. So, step one. It's about defining your goals or commitments. Now, as super driven, amazing, awesome women and men, um, we all know goals, right? We're probably all setting goals like from five years old. I know I was going to be the first female president of the United States. That was my goal. Um, and there are a couple different ways to set those goals. Now we can set ourselves up for success or we can set our ups, ourselves up for failure. So there are two kinds of goals I want you guys to think about, an outcome goal or an improvement and adaptive goal. So an outcome goal is saying, I'm gonna lose 10 pounds, I'm gonna get this job, I'm gonna be X, Y, Z, right? So it's a very specific end point that you're expecting to reach. And you can do all the smart goals in the world around that, right? However, when you create a goal like that, you are failing every single day until you reach that goal. When you are trying to lose 10 pounds and every time you step on the scale, you're just waiting to see a specific number, you're gonna be disappointed for a really long time. And it's frustrating enough to make us stop after a few days or frankly, never start. Because the things that come to our mind of what we have to do to get to that outcome are big and overwhelming. So what we wanna do is design goals where we can feel successful every single day. These are goals about the process and where you wanna be. So for instance, Instead of having a goal of losing 10 pounds, what if you focused on eating for energy every single day? What if um, instead of being focused on being promoted, you focused on speaking up more and sharing your vision? Right, so we really wanna make sure that we're designing goals that we can achieve every day. And when we think about these, and when you choose one right now, it's gotta be important to you. Something you've tried in the past and haven't succeeded. I want this to be about you and your behaviors and not others. Something you can get better at, and I want it phrased affirmationally. So for instance, the example, um, is my example of I want to get better at saying yes to spur of the moment adventures. So take a minute and fill this in and let's check in with our wonderful volunteer Heather. Do you want me to just go ahead and chat it? Oh, no, I just want to know, speak up. Um, we're going to do some coaching as we go through. I know this first one is a pretty easy one. Um, but yeah, what's your, what's your improvement goal? Yeah, so my improvement goal is I want to get better at sharing my ideas and staying confident. Um, I think I have a habit of like, I share, I think about an idea, I come up with an idea and I share it and then I'm immediately like, oh my gosh, that's a horrible idea. I shouldn't have brought it up. I shouldn't have shared it. I should have kept it to myself. Um, so yes. I've yeah. been there, that negative self-talk, you put it out there and then it's like, oh no. Um, yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yes. I love that. Okay. Um, anyone else who would like to share their goals, please chat them in. 
Um, but let's go ahead and keep moving um, as we go to our next step. So step number two is to make a list of all the things you do instead of working on that commitment or that improvement goal. So what is that self-sabotage, all the small and big things, be honest with yourself, rat yourself out, come clean. You don't have to share, um, but it's great if you do. So for example, all the things that I do instead of saying yes to go on adventures, um, I stay home in Netflix and chill. I clean the house. I'll say I do it later and make plans and then never do. Um, maybe I'll do something different and I say I have other plans or I'll play with the puppy or do other work or all of these other things instead of saying yes. So take a moment and write down that list of the things that you do instead. And Heather, what's coming to mind for you? What are the things, um, instead of sharing your ideas and staying confident, what are the behaviors that you do instead? Um, I mean, I'll find myself. So, you know, when I have other opportunities where I could speak up and I could be confident and just like stay a lot of times, I'll retreat or even like if I work up the confidence and courage to speak up to something if somebody says like if I get feedback that's kind of along the opposite of what I'm saying rather than like standing in my truth and being going along with what I'm saying and saying like this is why I'm saying what I'm saying though and standing by it I like immediately retreat and I'm like yep you're right I'm wrong and um, so I'll, I'll do that a lot I will a lot of times when I have the opportunity to speak up I will just clam up because I'm like is it worth you know making myself feel vulnerable in this moment I'm gonna go ahead and like say say a no-go I'm, I'm not gonna contribute um, so you know sometimes if there is um, if there's an uncomfortable situation that comes up, rather than staying like confident in what I'm doing, sometimes it turns into like the blame shame game. Like if there's somebody else that can take the heat away from me by like acknowledging what's going on somewhere else that's not me, like sometimes I'll do that. Like I hate to even admit that. Like, but Good for you, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the real, the real truth of it. So. Well, thank you for being so honest. Um, you know, what I'm hearing is very natural. Um, and what I expect a lot of you are, are also feeling when you chatted in, um, is you feel what is that age old fight, flight, or freeze kicking in. Right, so we retreat, we shut down, maybe we freeze, maybe we fight, right? So these are all very natural things. So let's go into move into step three, part one, which is really about understanding your fears and the other commitments. And Heather, you already um, hinted at a little bit of it, but if you, imagine that today is the day um, that you're gonna um, step into this so for Heather today is the day you're gonna share that idea with confidence and and don't back down what are the things that come up for you when you think about completing that goal or if you don't complete one of your self-sabotaging behaviors um, for instance my real fears that come up if I you say yes to going on a spur of a moment adventure. I don't Netflix and chill. Serious and real fears come up for me that I'm gonna get physically hurt, that I'm gonna make a fool of myself and, and feel judged, um, that I'm gonna get left alone. Um, and I really, I can feel this in my body, in my chest, right? I start to feel tight, I lean in. Um, so something very real is happening when I'm not saying yes. Heather, you mentioned vulnerability, but I'd love to know what more comes up for you. Yeah, I mean, just specific items. And 
This, I would say it's mostly, it can come up in personal, but I would say that it's mostly professional that I like have issues um, with this. You know, I do worry, like, you know, some of those examples, like I do worry, like, my gosh, like, what if I say the wrong thing and they decide to fire me, you know, like, yes. I do worry that I could lose my job. Um, you know, I worry that they, that I'll be, you know, that my idea is not a good idea. And so then they think less of me. And then they're like, why do we have this person working for us? You know, so I, those are all those things where it's like, I kind of want to stay in the safe zone, um, you know, and so I would definitely say that those are, you know, I worry about being judged, kind of like you're saying, like being left alone, um, you know, so I would definitely say those are specifics for sure. I think being, I think I'm naturally a perfectionist. Um, just like you were saying, even from being a small child, it was always like, you know, it didn't matter like from kindergarten on, it was like always the best grade that you could possibly get like top 10 graduating in my class, like all of that. And so I am terrified to fail. Like it's just, it's petrifying, you know? It is. It really, it really is. And you know, that that's been in you um, your whole life, right? And so when we step back and look at these first three columns that we've written, I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling pretty icky. It doesn't feel good that I might lose my job or make a fool of myself, but I don't also don't like that I'm sitting here doing, saying I'll do it later and Netflixing, chilling. Like, I don't like that. Like I, as soon as I'm doing that Netflix and chill, I'm beating myself up the whole time in my head. Like you should have done this. You should have done that instead. Right. And we just keep beating ourselves up. So let's take a moment to pause and breathe because research has shown that emotions will peak in 60 seconds and will subside in 90 seconds as long as you don't attach a story to it. Think of it as that little kid running around and he trips and falls. Now he can look at his mom and mom can smile and say, oh, have fun, get up and keep running. Or she can look at him and say, oh no, are you okay? And he bases his reaction off of that. As a kid, you stubbed your toe and it was so painful. Now you stub your toe and you just go on, it's just the stubbed toe. Emotions will peak in 60 seconds and then subside in 90 seconds. And know that however you feel right now is right. It's okay to feel this way. It's natural to feel this way. In fact, your inner bitch is creating that ick to tell you that you're not living your value. The truth is your inner bee is really your brutally honest and impatient BFF. So let's take a look at this step three, part two, and what happens when I overlay my values into this situation. I personally value empowerment, creativity, authenticity, hard work, and curiosity. Now, is anything in step two supporting my values? Sure doesn't look like it. Now, how about my fears that arise? Also, total opposite. What we're seeing is that one person has the foot on the gas, that BFF has the foot on the gas, and that bitch has one foot on the brakes at all times, saying, go, 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 but wait, wait, wait. So what happens when we restate these fears and positive value aligned commitments. For instance, instead of being afraid, 
that I'll be left alone, I'm going to be committed to feeling comfortable in my own skin. And to replace the fear of being judged, I'm going to commit to trusting my friends. And I'm going to commit to trying. And I'm going to commit to exploring. Because all of those things support my values of authenticity, curiosity, creativity, and empowerment. And what's really amazing is you look at these commitments. These are commitments that are more strong and meaningful than that overall starting goal because they are going to help you in every aspect of your life. Heather, what is coming up for you? Do you know your values? Have you done any value work? Yeah, um, so a lot of what I have written down for my value work is just, um, you know, um, honesty, um, ingenuity, um, passion, because I think just like passion can come out with, with anything, you know, like personal, professional, um, you know, I would say that those are, those are some of my major values for sure. Are you struck by how much that your values are not being played when you do those other behaviors? Yeah, I mean, it really is. It's like, it doesn't even, it doesn't even match up like in any way, shape or form, you know? So this for me was my first really powerful aha in this exercise is understanding how my values are actually behind everything I'm trying to do. And that the more that I can focus on my values and personal strengths on these smaller commitments and bits of awareness, it creates that butterfly effect for all of us. Did anyone else have um, a, a quite a bit of a parallel? Um, and the conflict between their values. Um, and if you haven't done value work, um, that's something that I always do with my clients. There are a lot of great exercises out there. Um, I'm happy to share some, um, but it's really important to understand your values. Um, so hopefully everyone's experiencing some ahas and some goosebumps. And so now we're gonna to start to question our underlying beliefs that are driving our behaviors and emotions in step three. And we're gonna use if then statements to identify those blind spots. So when I started looking at everything that was coming up for me in terms of the fear, being left alone, that I wasn't athletic, all of these things, the assumptions that I came up with were if I'm not in charge and it hasn't been planned, then something goes wrong. If I go, then I'm sure to get hurt or slow down the group because I'm not athletic at this age. If I got hurt, my friends would abandon me or not notice that I was gone. So these are assumptions that I hold. These are true beliefs that I've been holding on to. And as I said them out loud, as I wrote them down, I had some serious like, ah, are you kidding me? Like, this isn't true. I know this isn't true, right? And so for each statement then, ask yourself, how do you really know that? Is that really true? And then mark each as false as you know it is. And these are false mindsets that you can turn around. Heather, have you come across anything that um, is holding you back? Yeah, I mean, I would say like, you know, an easy, like a false mindset that I have all the time is like, if I share, then my coworkers will judge me and think that I'm unkind or that I'm not good enough. And when I think that I truly believe it, like I believe it when it's happening and like, I start like, I'm not good enough. And you know, what am I doing? 
But like when I step back and think about it, my team is full of amazing people. Um, you know, my manager previously did my position. So she understands so many facets of my position and I'm able to chat with her and say like, I'm struggling with this. Did you ever experience this? And she says, you are so right. Like she validates my feelings and she tries to come up with helpful insight. And I, it, it's just so far from the truth, you know? And so I think that it's, it is important to just like, like you said, like that 60 seconds, like we ride on emotions and it's like needing to let it pass and then figure out like, okay, where is the truth in this? You know? So yes, exactly. And the more that you can continue and look for those facts that disprove those assumptions and bring awareness to it, the more that you'll be able to handle it differently. And one of the first things about handling it differently is knowing that this is happening, not because it's you, because it happens to everyone, right? Procrastination and anxiety work are always gonna arise when you really care about something. We have a natural immunity to change. And that's actually what this exercise is called in the positive psychology books is the immunity to change exercise because everyone feels this pedal to the gas, pedal to the brake. Mm -hmm. And so as you already started doing, Heather, it's really great to then pick one of these assumptions and start turning it into some kind of awareness for yourself and start taking some action. So you can pick one to focus on and just slowly throughout the week, build awareness of when those assumptions are at work. And it's really cool. There's a piece of our brain called the RAS that's actually going to start filtering your world for you. So you're going to find that since you've identified this assumption, you're going to easily start seeing it come to life. Ask yourself, how is that assumption getting in your way? Test it and listen to it for it and others. And then create an improvement goal for your assumption mindset. So if we go back to my first improvement goal and that very first step one, when I wanted to get better at saying yes to spur of the moment adventures, I really had this assumption that if I'm not in charge and it hasn't been planned, then something's gonna go wrong. So I decided to test that theory, right? Let's just test it out, is that true? So I had my boyfriend plan something, um, not really just like, hey, we're doing this and we had to figure it out as we go. It went fine. Um, so what's my assumptions improvement goal? I'm going to help breathe and visualize the positivity before responding to any invites that I get to make sure that I check for that getting her assumption. So my real thing is inserting a pause and a positive visualization before I respond. And what's great is this is gonna apply to a lot more um, than just this original goal. Um, is there something that you're picking up on, Heather, of, of a assumption that you wanna um, focus on improving this week? Yeah, um, I think just like with my assumption overall about, you know, just like in those situations where I'm bringing up things um, like I just need to, to ride out, you know, whatever's like, whatever point I'm bringing up, whatever idea I'm bringing up, I just need to write it out and then not allow myself to go back, like backpedal and just keep, keep going forward. You know, whether that's like I breathing through it or just like restating, like I am confident, like in what I'm doing, you know, I'm confident in sharing my thoughts. And also, I think taking like kind of going along with like the idea of failure is that I'm putting my ideas out there. And every idea might not be an idea that we use, but it doesn't make it a bad idea. And it doesn't mean that it was a bad thing to share it, you know, so exactly. And I love that you're leaning into this value of ingenuity. Mm -hmm. um, that it's about the process. It's about the thinking. It's not about the result, right? Mm -hmm. um, I love that you're leaning into this already. Um, and that's yes. exactly what you should be doing. Perfect. 
Um, so awesome. There we have it, folks. Um, the five steps to um, think differently and build a new relationship with that inner critic. Um, because she has a lot to tell you. You have a lot to learn, and it's not necessarily bad. I love this. This was really great. And I mean, you can read like all the self-help books, you know, in the world, but sometimes it's about like, you know, just sitting down and identifying how you're self-sabotaging yourself and like talking it through. Um, so it was, it was really helpful. I really enjoyed it. And I love that everybody was like giving feedback in the chat and this was fabulous. Awesome. Thank you so much for volunteering, Heather, and putting yourself out there. I know that it's hard, um, but I, I think it's really helpful for everyone to see. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone for chatting in as we went. Um, I love all of these ideas um, and these commitments to be curious and just to be adventurous and to just try. Um, you know, action builds confidence. Um, so I would love to talk to you guys again. Please sign up for a call with me. Um, you have to answer a few questions just so that we can have an awesome conversation. Put as little information as you want in there. Um, but thank you so much, everyone. Um, and have an awesome, awesome day. Yes. Thanks. You as well. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.